Okay, let's talk facility service management. First, an overview. Uh, so the facility service management application, it offers a few different things. You can see the location of a facility's request so a facility's team knows exactly where users encountered an issue. You can identify CIs for each facility request so you know which items are in your infrastructure are impacted uh, and allow any user to in the system to view all open facilities requests. Users can see the facility issues that have already been reported before they submit a new request. All right, here's a quick list of everything we're gonna go over. You can pause it if you wanna take a look here. So I've got this plugin activated for facility service management. Let's it has demo data, so let's go take a look at a facility service request. So facilities, we can see open unassigned. Let's go take a look at some of the unassigned facilities request. Okay, so this first one, let's dive into this one. The outlet on the west wall is dead. Okay, so here you can see the state, uh, the sort of process flow that each facilities request can go through. Um, first is draft, then it goes to submitted. So first, someone might come in here and request uh, this issue right here. The outlet on the west wall is dead. While other facilities requests might skip draft, particularly if they're coming out of the service catalog, such as uh, I need a new projector set up in conference room 123. Well, they can just go to the facilities catalog and order that and it would immediately go to submitted or even perhaps ready and possibly even assigned. Typically though, you're gonna get that to an assignment group such as facilities workers and that they'll look at their queue and pick something up. Okay, so let's just take a look at this request and start from the beginning here. All right, so the caller I'm gonna choose as um, my, let's just do Scott Allen. And because I chose Scott Allen, the location's already defined here, 2104. So if I click on this show space, and let me enable my pop-ups here, always allow. Let me click on that. So this, after clicking on that GPS pin, you can see that I'm getting taken to the four pin floor plan. And we immediately get taken straight to the room where this issue is happening or where I'm, where Scott Allen is located, I should say. Okay, let's jump back to the primary view. If we had an affected CI, we can choose that here. Uh, or if we wanted to go with a template, we can also populate it with a template. So here you can see the various uh, facilities requests and here's one, the AC is broken. Let's just pick that, okay. All right, now let's save this. All right, from here, let's choose ready for work. You can see that because I chose the template, we had some fields overridden. Okay, now you can see that we're moving, we moved to a state of ready. And we've got a uh, facilities request task here. Where did this come from? This is because we chose a template of AC is broken, which now you can see that it's read only. You can't change a uh, template selection once it's entered the ready state. We've got tasks uh, available and task SLAs available now. So this task says, hey, we need to um, call the manufacturer for service and warranty. Okay. Now let's go take a look at the task. Okay, we've got the task view loaded up. From this perspective, from this form view, we could choose to add some skills. So in order to complete this request, let's choose, uh, you might have to have a skill in customer service. Okay, we can lock that back down. So choosing skills here allows you to make a smarter and quicker selection when it comes to 
divvying out tasks for your fulfillers. Okay, flipping to another user. Here's Alice Smith. She's one of our facilities fulfillers. So she's going to log in and she's gone to my group's work here. And we've got the list of tasks that are available for work. I'm going to change our sorting, change the number descending. Okay, so here's the task that we we're just looking at call manufacturer for service and warranty. Let's click into that. Okay, from this view, we can choose request more information or assign to me. So let's choose assign to me. Now we can see that the states move from pending assignment is done with assigned and we've ex we're at accepted. So at this point, the fulfiller can go in here and say, start work. Now I'll work in progress. All right, I've made the call. Okay, I posted a comment in, my, in the work notes saying that I've made the call. Oh, we can see it here. Okay, now it's a few days later and I've received it. I'm going to say I've installed the new unit. All right, so we click close complete and we see that the, the last comment was I've installed the new unit. Okay, now let's take a look at the parent record. We had now that we completed this task. All right, at this point, I can take a look at the facilities request and click on agree to completion. And the facilities request is marked complete. That's a full process flow for a facilities request. I'm jumping over to the facilities catalog. Here we can see a few different categories able to select. Let's search for safety. All right, let's report a safety issue. Uh, we can say at this location, a space heater with no safety mechanism is kept on 24 seven at this office. All right, let's choose a priority of two submit and let's look for my requests and we can see my request available here. All right, jumping back to the floor plan view. Here we can see uh, an example chaos campus layout has already been set up from the demo data. So we can see it then in this campus, we have two buildings. Selecting building one. Let's just see occupancy. Here on the right, we can see 118 out of 130. We're at 91%. We can see the same sort of thing over here for building two. All right, here we can see the floor layout for plan for building one. And all these icons represent various space functions. Here we can see tasks. We can even select assign to me if we only see tasks assigned to myself. Okay, here we can select a zone. Let's do AC1. And if we click on the pin, it'll take us directly. Uh, that'll happen for any of these. Let's look into this one. Here we can see a facility space form view in our pop-up view. We see building that this specific space is in building one, floor one. We've got an area of square feet to find here. That can also be in meters. We can define a cost center. We can choose one of four states out of the box. Here are the out-of-the-box states for availability. And a flag for occupiable. All right, let's take a look how we can use the filters tool. So let's draw color by department. Accounting and finance is in blue. Business development is green. Communications is yellow. Pretty neat. Let's filter by availability. Green is vacant. Blue is at capacity. Red is over capacity. Orange is not occupied. This allows you to visualize the types of spaces you have. 
So I've disabled cubicles and I've disabled bathrooms. Everything else is highlighted in blue. Let's go back to our availability view. All right, green is vacant, blue is at capacity. Let's say, well, let's move Betty Reed into 1110. Let's do a single user move. User to be moved, Betty Reed. We automatically populate our from location. Here's our to location populated correctly. Let's choose a date of right now. And we have to do a security badge update to make sure that her badge accurately reflects her current office number. Does she need boxes? Should we move her assets? If your CMDB is mature enough, then you'll see a list of Betty Ree's assets here, such as the computer, maybe her monitor, a laptop. You can select them over here on the slush bucket menu and drag them over. And those would be marked as moved as well. So let's submit that. Now we can see the uh, move request. Let's jump in it. Okay, now let's switch over to the fulfiller view to complete this move request. Okay, we need to impersonate a move request fulfiller. And then we navigate to the move requests that are open on the side. Let's jump into this most recent move request. And here's our user, Betty Reed. All right, now let's click assign to me. Okay, now let's take a look at the move tasks. Move user and assets. Let's take it. Okay, task is to move user and assets. Let's go ahead and assign that to me. Let's start work. Okay, that took us back to the move request. Let's dive back into the move task. Let's do in work. And that task is now marked close complete. Okay, let's close the rest of our tasks. <clears throat> All right, now our overall move request is close complete. Search for Betty Reed on our floor plan. Now let's pinpoint our new location. And we can see Betty's been moved. Now she's in this new office. The actual moving of locations for Betty was done behind the scenes in a workflow without the fulfiller having to do anything. Let's impersonate Betty. Uh, because we have an issue with the new room. <coughs> We're going to go to our self-service catalog. This can be more user-friendly if defined in the service portal. And we're going to create a janitorial issue. And we have an issue. It looks like there's soda spilled all over the top of the desk. And that request would go through the normal facilities fulfillment process. All right, now let's take a look at the facilities request templates and see what they look like. All right, so for the AC is broken. Let's go into there. All right, this is how the template editor looks. You can see the name of the request is AC is broken. We've got our short description defined. If you even want to select a checklist template, you can do that. And then for tasks, you can see here's a task called the manufacturer. Tasks defined here will automatically be generated when selecting a facilities request template. Let's add another task. Install unit after arrival. Install the new unit. And we can say it depends on the task of calling the manufacturer. 
which will have to be complete first. And now we have an option to insert one more if we'd like that. But let's go ahead and save that. If we click on Edit Fields, we can see that we can change the priority. If we want to change the priority up to moderate, we can say it's billable, not billable. Or well, we can say that you need a skill of customer service for this one. Or we can even set the category by default. Let's just say it's temperature issues and then save. And now any new requests created will have those attributes. All right, so now we're clicking on maintain categories and we can see that there's various categories available for facilities catalog requests. Health and Recreation, other inquiries. Let's go into Space Management. Here we can update our icons, our desktop images for it. And where we can also see the catalog items available within this category. All right, let's create a new campus. Let's call it Frankfurt HQ. We can change it to square meters, how it's measured. Right, well, let's define a new building. So for each of these buildings, I'm going to define it as the square meters. And I'm going to define a utilization that I want. What percentage area, let's say 2,000 usable, 3,000 gross. For our office location, and then three floors for our data center. Now, while I just showed you how to configure it manually, you can also import GeoJSON data into ServiceNow. That's an out of the box feature for ServiceNow. All right, now let's manage our building. And we're gonna create a new level. We're gonna define our utilization again and define this as the main level. And then within level one, we're going to create a space. We're going to say it's the office space, define our building. And here's where we're going to say our occupancy of 100. And we can also associate departments with a specific location. And then we can put a weight towards to say, hey, we want to devote the bulk of this office to HR. All right, now let's take a look at another cool feature. The move planning tool is where you can do scenarios and see what it would be like to move, say, a group of department from one floor to another. So let's say, select a scenario executive move. We're going to select a campus of the Cello Business Campus, and now we get a sort of breakdown of all the users. All right, now let's see what it would be like to move a specific department. Let's say business development. And click on 24 seats. Let's choose their destination to building two. Let's say floor two. And let's see what it looks like. It looks like we'd be 17 over maximum if we did that. We can continue this. Let's take a look at corporate. And let's set them to floor two, but we don't want to bring over Amber and Roland. And we can give them a specific move group if we'd like. And we can see that they're two over maximum if we do that as well. And you can bring this as much as you want. You can filter it by building. This feature can really save some headaches. All right, I hope you found this video informative. We went over facilities request flow using the facilities catalog, the floor plan tool, and it's all cool features. Uh, submitting an issue from an end user perspective, managing templates, categories, uh, configuring a new campus and associated buildings, and using the nifty move planning tool.